Hey guys, welcome to Render Eyes and welcome back to another video. And if you're new here, welcome to the channel where you can expect to see some weird camera angles like this one every now and then. So yeah, let's get into the video. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Render Eyes. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this isometric forest scene in Blender 2.8, which was actually rendered in cycles. It started off as this generic scene and slowly developed into this more cartoony style with an isometric camera. This is actually the second time I've done an isometric scene on the channel so you can just uh, watch the first one right here. I'll make sure to make this video as simple as possible so that you can follow this video while also trying to keep it short. And if you decide to follow this tutorial and make your own scene, make sure to tag me at RenderEyes on Instagram because I really love seeing what you guys create with my tutorials. You can also download the finished project on Gumroad through the link given in the description. So without any further ado, let's get into the actual video. Let's first start off by deleting everything and then adding the cube back again because that's how we do it. Now in edit mode, we're going to set it below the floor grid so that the origin is right on top of here. It doesn't really matter but I like to do it when I model grounds because that way you can just scale up the cube in object mode as much as you want but it won't go beyond the floor and it is really helpful when you quickly want to add stuff to the scene without worrying whether the bottom of the object is in contact with the ground. Anyway, let's press S and Shift Z to scale it up in the X and Y axis. Now before we do anything else, let's set up our camera. Add a camera to the scene and position it somewhere right here by pressing Ctrl Alt Numpad 0. Now go to the object data properties on the right here and change the lens type to orthographic. This will remove the sense of perspective from the camera. Now we can play around with the scale value till we get something that works with our scene. For me, this value was around 30. Now the basic idea I had for this scene was inspired by a video I saw on YouTube of a Finnegan fox. I wanted to make a forest where there was a cozy looking house and a fox who was just wandering around and decided to take a look at the house. At first, I wanted to make him feel very lonely only by adding a stream of water between the house and the fox but that didn't turn out as I expected especially with the isometric look so I decided to add a bridge with the fox trying to cross the bridge to get to the other side. Let's now work on that stream of water first. So go to edit mode and add a bunch of loop cuts till you get square faces at the edge here. Now add the same number of loop cuts in the opposite direction to get some even topology on the top face. Now go to the face select mode and select a bunch of faces for the stream by pressing C for circle select. Bring these faces down slightly and then switch to sculpt mode, choose the smooth tool by pressing S, lower the strength by pressing shift F and bring up the size by pressing F and gently paint over this edge. You can also add some bumps on the ground using the clay strips brush to make it feel more natural. Next, let's add the mesh for the actual water. So we're going to add a plane and scale it up till it's perfectly the size of our land here. Go to the top view by pressing 7 on the numpad and add some cuts on the mesh by using the knife tool, shortcut is K on the keyboard and try to trace the shape of the elevation but still keeping some extra space for the edge. You don't need to make this perfect, any rough shape that follows the curve will do. After you're done, delete the extra vertices on the outside to isolate the cutout and then extrude it down till it fills the hollow part. That's our mesh for the water. In the scene that I had, I have this house model that I got off of Blendswap, the link to which I'll leave in the description. It looks super cute and works perfectly for the scene. So let's open up that project and copy the stuff that we need by selecting them and pressing Ctrl C. Then we can open our project and press Ctrl V to paste them in. You might need to scale and position it according to your scene. I decided to put them right about here with the bridge extending to the middle of the stream. Let's keep these models in a new collection called house so that we can access them all together easily later when we need them. Let's instance some of these meshes to make our bridge on the other side. We're also going to copy this lamp model so that we can light up that area later during the lighting stage. For the fox who is also an important subject in the scene, I also used the free model from Blendswap. Again, the link is in the description. For this particular scene, I found that the default pose that the fox was already in was exactly what I needed. With a few tweaks in the pose mode, I was able to get it to look straight at the house while walking on the bridge. Now we need to add trees to the forest which is arguably the most important element to make it feel like a forest. I used a bunch of models I made for a game a few years ago and they did the job very well. So I'll provide a link in the description to download these models along with some extra smaller models for free. I literally took the trees and manually placed them all over 
with the scene, tweaking the scale and rotation of each one of them to make them look not too repetitive. Next step is to add the undergrowth. So I have these models for the grass, the twigs and branches, and the rocks. The grass was made using a plane and cutting out the shape using a knife tool in the same way I made the water. Then I extruded it and scaled in the top faces to get this blocky, cute looking grass. You can model the twigs by using a cube or by using a skin modifier which makes the process a little easier. Let me show you how. You can add a cube to the scene, go to edit mode, select all the vertices and hit M at center. This will merge all the vertices to the center. Now add a skin modifier which will consider this vertex as the center of a cube. So you can just work off of this single vertex to create your mesh, extrude and make the branches thinner by pressing Ctrl A. You can only use Ctrl A for this, pressing S will not make any change. The rocks are super simple, they are just cubes with subdivisions with the faces triangulated by pressing Ctrl T and with random vertices selected and moved to get different shapes. Now we can use particle systems for each of these models and use vertex groups to control where they appear. So let's select the ground model, go to particle properties and add a new particle system. Turn on advanced to get access to the extra settings. Now scroll down to the render category and set the render as to collection and select the collection with the grass models as the instance collection. Here are the settings I use for the grass, feel free to copy them. Now let's create a vertex group to control the density of the particle system. So to do that, go to the object data properties and add a new vertex group named grass. Now go back to the particle settings and scroll down to where it says vertex groups and select the grass vertex group that we just created for the density control. What we can do now is go to edit mode, select all of the top faces leaving only the outer edge and assign them to the grass vertex group. This will make sure that they only appear on the top of the model and not the sides or the bottom. With the vertex group still selected, you can also go to the weight paint mode, set the weight to zero and paint in areas where you don't need any grass such as the stream right here. In a similar way, we can add the particle systems for the twigs and the rocks and control where they appear using vertex groups and weight paints. So that's the whole modeling part, let's take a look at what we have for the materials. For the ground material, we have a noise texture which uses a texture coordinate node and a mapping node which you can add very quickly by pressing Ctrl T with the noise texture selected. This only works if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled. We are using the object coordinate for this texture. Now let's add a color ramp node, change it to B spline and add new stops and change the color to a range of brownish colors to get a nice ground texture. Connect this ramp to the base color input of the principal shader. Let's add another color ramp and bump node and connect the output of the ramp to the height input of the bump node to get bumps on our model. I'm not really describing the values because it really varies with different projects. Let's hook this bump node to the normal input of the principal shader. You can also use the second color ramp and connect it to another color ramp with both of the stops set to almost white to control the roughness of the material. For the trees, it's just a principal shader with different colors for different trunks. The leaves have a principal shader as well but with an RGB node connected to the base color and the subsurface color with the subsurface value set at around 0.2 to 0.4 to get some nice subsurface scattering. It's basically the translucent glowing effect you see when you point a flashlight through your ears or fingers but for leaves. For the house, the windows have a material with an emission shader with the color set to an orange and the strength set to 100. The lamp posts have a similar material but with a blue color and strength set to 1000. For the grass and rocks and twigs, I have the simple material setup. I have a color ramp node with the interpolation set to constant and various stops of different variations or shades of the same color. The factor of the color ramp is controlled using the random output of an object info node so that every particle gets a random material applied to it. The rest of the materials are as they were when they came with the blend swap project. I use the same water material that I use in my lighthouse scene and that material is from a tutorial by Lukas Keller. He was kind enough to give out the tutorial files for free. So so that is where the shader is originally from. Next comes the lighting and this is what it looks like. I have a huge cube in the middle of the scene where I added a material, removed the principal shader and added a principal volume node and connected it to the volume input of the material output. The only thing I changed was the density which was set to around 0.01. Most of the lighting in the scene comes from the emission shaders of the lamps but I also have an area light with a bluish color and a power of 1000 watts coming from here to imitate the moonlight. I also added two of these big area lights to either side of the scene with a similar but more saturated shade of blue and a power of 500 for the ambient lighting. 
And that's everything that I did to make the scene. It should be easy enough to replicate so feel free to do so and again if you end up uploading it on Instagram tag me at renderite so that I can share it on my story and get it some exposure. If you have any queries related to the video you can always ask me in the comments section and I'll be there to help you out. So that's it for this video. If you liked it make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this in the future. If you want to support the channel directly then do check out my Patreon page and consider donating any amount you see fit. Based on the tier of your donation you will get some cool stuff including monthly blender creative packages as well as download links to all of my projects speaking of which if you're interested in buying the scene on gumroad check the link in the description it's always there we also have an awesome discord server where the veteran members get together and have discussions about art thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one